Okay, looking at 1.5, properties of limits. These properties we're looking at describe how um, limits can be separated or considered unique. For any real number A, suppose f at x and g of x have limits that exist at x equals A. So what that means is that we're going to assume that the limit of f at x and the limit of g of x exists. So the different properties involved are, include the, the first one, which is the limit as x approaches a of some constant k. So the limit as x approaches a of some constant k is equal to just k. And that's just the constant because if you're taking as a number approaches a constant, the answer will always be a constant. And this is for any constant k. Now, the limit as x approaches a of x is actually just equal to a. And that makes sense. That as x approaches a of the function, and the function is just a line, y equals x, then that number will approach the same number. So therefore, it must equal a. Part 3. The limit as x approaches a of f at x plus or minus g of x. So you can think of this as a limit of a sum. The limit of a sum is equal to the sum of the individual limits. And the rationale here is that sometimes you're asked to do a question that looks like this, but you only know the individual limits themselves. And so as a result, when you need to know the sum of a limit, you can take the limit of the individual parts and find the sum of the individual parts. Part 4. The limit as x approaches a of c times f at x. Now c is any constant c. So what that means is we can take so any, pro, any number times a function. So you can think of it as c being the coefficient or a common factor of the function. And what you can do is remove that common factor and just take the limit of the individual function. Next, and that's for any constant c. Another limit property includes the limit as x approaches a of f at x times g of x. So this is kind of like, think of it as the product law. So these all are limit laws, and this in particular is would be considered the product. So the limit of a product is equal to product of the individual limits. All right, next part. Part six, the limit as x approaches a of f at x over g of x is equal to the quotient of the individual limits. So the limit of a quotient is equal to the quotient of the individual limits. Again, though, provided that the limit of x approaches a of g of x does not equal zero. Obviously, the denominator cannot equal zero. Part seven, the limit as x approaches a of f at x to the power of n is equal to limit as x approaches a of f at x at n. What that means is here is that when you take this particular, uh, the limit of a power is equal to the limit of the base all raised to the exponent. And that's for any rational number n. Example. Let's look at an example to evaluate certain limits. Let's look at the limit as x approaches 3 of 2x squared plus 5x minus 1, all in brackets. Note that when you have the limit of something that looks like this, this should be 
in brackets. You should have brackets around this whole thing. So instead of red, we should have this colored in black. It's the limit of the whole thing. Well, that equals the limit of the parts. And if you know the limit of the parts, it equals the limit of the whole thing put together. Turns out, the answer turns out to be 32. Now for that question, you could easily have just substituted 2 times 3 squared plus 5 times 3 minus 1. You could have done that all in one step, folks. You did not need to separate them. But remember, there needs to be brackets. Otherwise, the limit only affects what's right before it. So, for example, if we had this bracket removed, what that would mean, if we had this bracket removed, what that will mean is that, just quickly, if we had that bracket removed, the limit would only be to 2x squared. So we could have had brackets just around there. And if that was true, the answer would be different than the one you have there. So be careful where you find those brackets. Okay, the brackets will make a difference in terms of the limit. All right, part B. Let's look at part B. The limit as x approaches 3 of the root of x over x plus 2, the only time the situation that we wouldn't be able to evaluate the limit is if the denominator over here would be 0. So technically you could just plug in 3 plus 2 down here and 3 up top. Or we could take the limit as x approaches 3 of the inside, because that's what the limit law says, and take the square root of the answer at the end. Either way, you get the answer of root 3 over 5. Part C. Take the limit as x approaches 3 of this function. It's a rational function. Note that for this type of function, you don't necessarily have brackets for this, but it's not a bad idea to insert them. All right, what you need to do for that question is factor the numerator, factor the denominator, sorry, the denominator is already factored, and what you can do is cancel the x minus 3s and you get the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 5. And that answer is going to be 8. Why is that the answer 8? Well, in the beginning, the reason why we couldn't just plug it in is if I plugged it in here, I would get 3 minus 3, which gives us 0. So the only way that we could get a possible answer is if we factored the numerator, canceled these guys, which they get canceled nicely, you end up with an answer of x plus 5. So we're taking the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 5. So then we plug in the 3 for x, and you get 8. So the answer to c is 8. Let's go on to d. So here's the question. This is the question you're given. What automatically is the problem is this x on the bottom. In order to do that, we need an x up top to cancel with this x on the bottom. The way to do that is to see what we can do at the top. Here, folks, we have root x plus 4 minus 2. What we can do here is rationalize the numerator in this case. Multiply by that magic 1. That magic 1 is going to be root x plus 4 plus 2 over root x plus 4 plus 2. So it's our magic 1. But the beauty of that is that our magic 1, our numerators, are difference of squares. So the answer that we get here is limit as x approaches 0 of x plus 4 minus 4 all over x times that denominator. Do me a favor, folks. Please do not expand this leave it the way it is, so that there are no errors. The reason why is eventually this x is going to be cancelled. So in order to cancel it, it's got to be separated. It's got to remain separated. What do you get? You get x on the top, x times that bracket on the bottom, 
those X's should cancel. Lo and behold, we're left with 1 over 4 is the answer. So a reminder again, up here in this part here, those X's will cancel themselves so that we get 1 over root X plus 4 plus 2. And you're going to plug in 0 in here. So 0 plus 4 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. The answer here is 1 quarter. All right, limit for the next one. This one is a little bit tougher. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the next video to answer this question. See you in the next video.